Hi everyone, well we're now in Lyon where the All Blacks are for the next four or five days before they play their next match in Toulouse and we've had a little bit of time to digest that opening match in Paris and uh, boys, what do we think, Jeff? Uh, reality is if the All Blacks were under any illusion what it might take to win a Rugby World Cup, I think they've got an idea now how much better they're going to have to be because when the pressure came on last night, particularly in that second half, the French delivered what was a masterclass on how to win a game when you're under pressure. And they were gone, Mills, just before half time under all sorts of pressure. The All Blacks had an opportunity to maybe put the screws on them. They <coughs> missed that and this was a different French team in the second half. Yeah, I think they felt in the second half, perhaps just before the second half, if they had nailed that sort of some points leading into that. The, the French are out on their feet. They came out, you know, they started well once again, scored a try. Um, just just after that period, really, eh? ill discipline cost them a few mistakes, uh, and that allowed France, who were really impressive in this in this boat in terms of turning the tide, you know, back back their their way, and, and really they slowed the game back down again. They went to a set piece move. They built on some uh, some pressure. And in the end, you know, the All Blacks kind of folded. Um, and so I, I think they'll be disappointed with that. The All Blacks definitely be disappointed with the result. But I still believe there's plenty there to be able to say, well, hey, they can actually get a lot better. Fair to say, Jeff, that the French got more impact off the bench than what the All Blacks did? Well, I think momentum played a big part in it. And the moment they got the crowd back into the game, that's the sort of pressure they can put on you. And that's what everyone's going to face against them when they get into the playoffs, when they get deep in the tournament. So I think when you look at the bench, and they do, certainly did get a lift, particularly up front, but then they got that momentum, they were kicking their goals, and you combine that with the ill-discipline of the All Blacks, reduced to 14 men again. We saw how difficult it was against the Springboks of Twickenham. So all the little things you need to do to be successful in a Rugby World Cup, particularly when the margins were small. And remembering the margins were small. It was close. Yeah. This game was really close. The All Blacks were leading for a, a couple of times in this game and had scored a couple of impressive tries and had missed a couple of opportunities. So I think, like Mills said, they can look at some of the things they've done well, but I think, honestly, Nisbo. They know they've got to be better, right? I mean, yeah. that, that's not going to be good enough. And they're going to welcome back and need to welcome back some critical pieces to their puzzles. And they'll welcome back into their squad, Ethan Blackadder, over Sammy Penny Finau for the rest of this tournament. Interesting that they've done that. Yeah, what do you think about that, Mills? Uh, the explanation is that he can cover seven as well as six, and that's why he's won the day. Well, it makes, makes kind of sense now. I mean, having... You know, Sam Kane, you know, uh, withdraw out of the game, you know, right up to sort of kickoff, we believe, or actually the, the day before when he had back spasms. So it is the ideal situation where we can cover both. You know, I would have thought they would have gone with, with Sammy Penny, but you can see the explanation in that. Uh, the only downside is, is that he hasn't played a lot, and whether he is, you know, he's injury prone, and that's probably the, the concern. They're already sort of trying to cover that aspect in terms of the injuries that they've, that they've sort of got. But there's no doubt they need something different. Uh, something, something with a bit of, I don't know, um, I don't know if physicality is the right word. Or I think mean, you and I spoke about it yesterday, a bit of mongrel. Um, yeah. It's perhaps something that they, they, they might need. I think it's execution. I mean, our skill sets, once again, the fact we took the ball into contact on a number of occasions, we had success through the course of the season when we were really good at the breakdown. The French in the second half in particular controlled the breakdown, got multiple penalties, got multiple turnovers. We were, weren't able to get any sort of momentum into our game. And to me, a lot of that is, like you say, the impact off the bench in this boat. But I just look at some of the little things that we weren't able to execute and do. We considered a couple of scrum penalties. The details have to get done and they have to be better. I'm not convinced on the Blackadder selection either. Not that he's a, not a good player. He is a quality player. But we've got plenty of sevens. We had three sevens available for this test match we've got and, and I feel a little bit sorry for Luke Jacobson I really do the fact that virtually you're replacing like to like for me Jacobson plays six seven and eight so how they use these players over the next three weeks in this bow is going to be interesting for me how they combine these players who are returning from injury the guys they want to get some game time and how you protect some guys as you push towards the quarterfinals a little quick speculation because the next game is Namibia who let's face it won't be flash will they introduce a whole lot of new players I was going to ask you that question, you know, in terms of the fact of, well, we've seen last night once again the inability of having something different off the bench. Oh, I think Damien McKenzie need, needs to be there. You know, when, when they get stuck in a situation like they have done against the Springboks where they're it almost at times not on their side. They, they, they're going at something, going at something, and then all of, all of, they run out of time and they just keep at it. I think they need something different. I think McKenzie needs to... to you know, obviously have a have a crack whether it's off the bench or or he starts but it might be a chance for those sort of guys to sort of stamp their mark and get themselves back into that 23. I've had a random thought here I'm just thinking about 
maybe putting together the combinations, Nisbo, that you might like to finish test matches. The ones starting with those guys, so they get some time together and give them the chance to maybe play a good 80 minutes, 60, 70 minutes together, rather than quite often relying on them only getting 20. Maybe it's the getting the balance right of the guys that will finish up. But I can't wait for it to keep rolling on. We know it was a great occasion. Uh, the next four weeks are going to be pretty critical. OK, boys, it's hot, hot, hot <laughs> here in Leon. So we're heading to the shade.